Typically, advertising is created by an advertising agency. They're a company that provides the creative marketing and other business services that are related to creating, producing, and placing advertisements in media for clients. Depending on the size of the agency, you're going to have more or less people working on these projects. These are some of the requirements for being an art director, as well as the job skills. An advertising idea or concept is the creative reasoning or intention that underlies the advertising communication. And again, we're back to creative briefs, which are the written documents outlining and strategizing the design or advertising project. Those are always important so that you know exactly where you're going with your, with your ideas. These are some examples of creative brief considerations. What's the difference between your company and another company? Uh, what do people think about the brand, the entity, or whatever? What emotional associations do the target audience have with this brand? We've talked about creative briefs before. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but we do need to consider the target audience and what their wants, what their needs are, so that we know that those are being met. Remember that clients don't just want to be sold more product. They are wanting a relationship between the brand and the customers. They want to have the customer interact with the brand, not just make the purchases. After you have developed an ad idea, you need to critique your own ideas. Ask questions similar to these. Why would people care about it? Would people engage with it? How does it achieve its goals? How does it fit with the brand? And is it interesting? These are all things that need to be considered. Understanding what drives people is critical to finding an insight or an emotional truth to what you're putting in your advertising. How can your advertising idea address people's psychological or emotional needs? Basically, it's function versus emotional benefits. People want to know what's in it for them. Will this brand make me happier? Will it make me healthier? Will it make me more attractive? Is it going to make something in my life easier? An ad often touts a benefit. A functional benefit is that thing that's practical or useful like a bath soap may have the advantage of extra moisturizer or a credit card company that offers protection against identity theft. An emotional benefit is some kind of intangible asset that stimulates an emotional response in us. It's not functional as far as the use of the product or the service, but it's something that makes you feel good. It's something that touches us emotionally, uh, greater self-esteem or uh, some any type of a, an emotional benefit. Hair coloring covers gray hair. That's the function. But if a hair color brand promises greater self-esteem, that emotional benefit might resonate with the target audience. A dark chocolate candy brand could tout the functional benefit of flavonoids or the emotional benefit of indulgence. So always ask that question, what's in it for me? If you think of all advertising as if it was created for social or mobile media, realize that your idea has to do one of these things. It either needs to inform or educate or raise awareness. It needs to promote the social good or it needs to be entertaining. Listen to what the audience says about the brand on social media or in reviews. Learn from how people use the item. Develop empathy with the people who are the end users. Be the audience. Extend beyond the conventions. Think openly about what your ad ideas can encompass and be aware as you observe what people are doing with this product or service. The digital world has increased the need for engaging stories that build a brand's narrative across media channels. There are so many more channels of communication where people can be pulled in by entertaining or informative content. 
Social media plays a big role in most people's lives. It provides a fertile place for interactive stories. Along with conventional brand storytelling in paid, owned, and earned media, the advertising ecosystem is collaborative. It's co-created and a new forum for two-way conversations. It's often quick-paced and it can be local as well as global. Think of Nike's Just Do It tagline. Nike's greater story starts there, becoming a motivational call to action, setting the tone for all the individual stories told across media channels. In advertising, storytelling has a cumulative effect. It's got to be consistently told or reinforced across media. Each individual ad, regardless of media, whether it's mobile or print, is a, con is a contribution to that story. Tell the story, but also make sure that the message is clear. Make sure that the text works with the images. Let's go back and think about the works every time layout that we worked with earlier. Most print or still ads consist of the following components. There is the image, the headline, the body copy, a tagline, and a sign off or a call to action. The image is the principal image, a photograph, an illustration, some kind of graphic. The headline is the principal written message. Body copy is the text that supplements it. Tagline is a catchphrase used across campaigns that conveys the brand benefit or its positioning. It generally acts as an umbrella theme or the core strategy for the campaign. The sign-off includes the brand, its logo, the web address, social media, maybe a photograph or illustration of packaging, but those items are generally included. So here we have, oh, these are our copy-driven and composition-driven advertisements. Let's go back to this one. We have a large visual. We have our headline which is very small it's sort of married into being also a tagline but it says small but tough polo and it's got the logo okay so it's got every it's got most of the elements we can vary some of this but we're talking more typical where this is a little more advanced development copy driven compositions emphasize the copy de-emphasize the images lots of text with supporting images. This can you know, vary according to the ad idea. Sometimes a headline might be the sole graphic element of a composition. On the other hand, image-driven compositions emphasize the image and de-emphasize the headline. So decide whether you want the viewer to look at the image or the headline. By arranging graphic elements in the composition, you attempt to guide the viewer's gaze through a composition as required for communication. Because people do not spend more than a few seconds glancing at an ad, the principle of visual hierarchy enables communication. It creates order and it makes it easier for rapid message communication. To guide the viewer's eye, you establish a good visual hierarchy. Emphasize the arrangement of visual elements according to how important they are. Stress some elements over others. Make some graphic elements dominant. Make some subordinate. Any compositional structure must direct the viewer's gaze. What do you want the viewer to see first, second, third, and so on? An ad campaign is simply a series of coordinated ads. It's based on an overarching strategy, closely related ideas, and it's connected by the look and the feel, the tone, the style, the images, taglines. An integrated media campaign works across media channels. So you will include print as well as broadcast, interactive as well as mobile, any other screen-based media, anything that you're going to see outdoors, in public, and even unconventional items. An advertising campaign needs to get people's attention and have this last over a period of time and it's going to have to work across different media channels as well. 
what makes a good integrated campaign. The core strategy needs to be elastic. It has to be overarching and each ad idea has to come back to that original strategy. Each individual unit across media channels is going to grab somebody's attention and hold interest. Each media channel is used for how it can best connect it with people and add something of special interest to the overall campaign. The visual communication ignites a dialogue between the brand and the consumer and it needs to surprise and actively involve people. It needs to be something that people will talk about. If you study ad campaigns, you'll notice that art directors design an underlying compositional structure or a template for each individual ad unit in the campaign. It's a master layout that you put in where the graphic elements are going to always go. Uh, you pick out the typefaces, you pick out the color palette, you're going to have type alignment, focal points, and positioning of the elements in the composition all be the same. The images and some of the text are going to vary. This campaign structure can be referred to as triplets because each composition is identical or almost identical to the others. This is the way many campaigns are designed. For each unit in a triplet, the image can change, the headline can change, but the compositional structure stays exactly the same. Other elements maintained might include the visualization style, the overall style, the images from some photographer or from a particular illustrator. Some designers and art directors prefer to create cousins as opposed to triplets. It's a campaign where there's a familial appearance that stays the same among the individual ads, but there's more variation in the composition, there's more variation in the color palette, there's more variation in the visualization, but the campaign will still hold together and maintain a look or feel. With Cousins, unity with variety is the goal. So you're watching TV and you're watching something you've been waiting for and it's interrupted by commercials. People enjoy creative commercials, but commercials do interrupt programming, either broadcast, broadband, streaming, we end up with commercials. A commercial or a commercial spot is an advertisement with duration. It's usually 15, 30, or 60 seconds in length. It's time-based media. Television and web commercials or films have to do the following and do it all in just a few seconds. Remember, these can be as short as 10 or 15 seconds. Immediately grab the viewer's attention. Keep the viewer's attention for the entire length of time. Interest viewers with a captivating story, imagery, movement, music. It has to be something relevant. If it's animation, commercials or film, you have a chance to recapture the viewer's attention if they're still in front of the screen. It needs to call people to action, create awareness or drive people to a website. It needs to look and sound fresh and not look like something that everybody's seen over and over again. It needs to entertain, it needs to inform, it should be interesting enough to be viewed over again or to have somebody share it. In print, you have about two or three seconds to capture somebody's attention. With time-based storytelling, which is TV commercials or some kind of other web film, you will lose people's attention in the first two or three seconds. And you have to be able to recapture their attention in the next five. People drift in and out when they're watching. If there's a commercial that's engaging, its person is going to watch it. If it's boring, people will not pay attention.